Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, your number one source for income-oriented investing. And if you're an income investor like myself, there's probably zero chance that you haven't heard of the very popular Yield Max ETFs, right? These are ETFs, income-oriented ETFs listed on the US stock market. And there are many single stock ETFs. The first one that they came out with was Tesla. Uh, the stock symbol for that one is Tesla, of course. So these are very, very popular ETFs. And what they do is, they write covered calls, typically weekly covered calls on those single stocks. They have a bunch of them, over 20 of them now to generate really, really high yields. This is why they're very, very popular. Uh, and the thing is, is that some people, some investors might not want to choose the individual single stocks, single stock ETFs. So what they did is that in January, uh, about six months ago, mid January, they came out with the ETF called YMAX. That is the stock symbol. It is the Yield Max Universe Fund of Option Income ETF. So you could kind of consider it an all-in-one Yield Max ETF, where this is an ETF that holds many, if not most, of their all the Yield Max ETFs, right? The single stock name ETF. So in this video, I want to do a deep dive uh, in this ETF. I really, really like this one. This is the one I own personally. So we'll take a look at YMAX, the strategy, what's inside of it. And then I will give you my top five reasons why I think you should strongly suggest this ETF if you are an income oriented investor. Let's get to it. All right, everyone, I am on the Yield Max ETFs homepage here. Everyone, if you scroll down, you will see all the Yield Max ETFs that are currently out. Of course, you have Tesla, you have OARC, you have the Apple one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, with their um, annual distribution rates based on the latest distribution. So if you scroll down, you know, they got a bunch of them. So if you scroll down, you, would act, you will actually see the YMAX ETF right here, everyone. So this ETF, if you just click on that on YMAX, here is the YMAX homepage or the YMAX page. So it's very simple, guys. This is literally called the YMAX Universe Fund of Option e Income ETFs for a reason. So what they will do with this one, this will be an ETF that holds most of the other Yield Max ETFs. So if you scroll down, uh, we could we could see the management fee. So that this one does have a management fee of 29 basis points. All the yield max ETFs pretty much have their own management fee of 99 basis points. So the total MER or the total uh, fee for this one will simply be 99 plus 99 basis points plus 29 basis points, with, which makes 1.28% MER, right? So it's going actually, it's growing very rapidly. It's already, it's just under 200 million. So it's very simple concept to understand, guys. If we look at what's inside of it, the holdings, it will be literally the other yield max ETFs. Uh, most of them, we'll talk about that in a second, on an equal weighted basis, right? So you will have all of them here. You will have the weightings, the percentages. Of course, they're not going to be extremely perfect in terms of the percentages being equal weighted because, you know, if, if one of them goes higher, one of them goes lower, but it is rebalanced to make it an equal weight strategy. So essentially, guys, when you invest in WiMAX, you are investing in pretty much almost all of the single stock ETF one. So it, there's a lot, a lot of benefits for, to that, right? You have instant diversification. I'll talk about the benefits a little bit later. I just want to go um, through the list here and see what's actually in YMAX so far. So YMAX, like I discussed with Jay Pestricelli, who is uh, in the CEO of Zega, who actually manages the option strategies for all these ETFs, confirmed to me that YMAX will pretty much have all the yield max ETFs inside of them, except the other fund of fund ones. So things like YMAG, right, that hold the Magnificent 7, while the Magnificent 7 are already in YMAX. So YMAX will not have, for example, YMAG inside of it. It will also not have Ulti, uh, this one here, which is uh, another strategy where they're just they're, they're, they're picking and choosing stocks that have a lot of volatility. So that one is not going to be added in there. And also they started coming out with short uh, versions, right? Or inverse versions. So for example, here's the Tesla one, CRSH. So this is basically kind of does the opposite strategy of Tesla. So Tesla, they're writing covered calls. This one is the inverse, right? So it, this one will appreciate if Tesla goes down. So I did confirm that the short ones or the inverse ones will not be added to YMAX. So those are the exceptions. I just wanted to let you know that not all the yield max products will be added to YMAX. It's just going to be the basic, the more basic covered call one. So 
Uh, let's take a look at, you know, if you open the prospectus for any one of the single stock ones, uh, you will get this here basically. And I just want to uh, let you know and, and show you this because yield max ETFs, they're going to keep coming out with more and more of these, not only single stock, but also ETF style uh, covered call ETFs. So these will actually be added to YMAX eventually uh, once they do come out, uh, right? So for example, uh, you know, OARC, um, the OARC one here, which is Kathy Wood's ARC ETF. This one is already in YMAX, and they also recently came out with their second ETF one, GDXY, which is a uh, gold miner. So GDXY, I could confirm, will be added to YMAX. Um, YBIT, which is the Bitcoin one, that will be added to YMAX eventually. So th all the new ones that come out, guys, they eventually get added to YMAX, excluding the, uh, you know, the fund of fund ones and the inverse ones like we discussed. So I wanted to show you this because if you open the prospectus of any one of them, you could actually see which uh, yield max single stock ETFs and, e uh, yeah, and, and ETF style one, single stock and ETF style might come out in the future. So this is the prospectus, which means they filed for all these stocks. Now, it doesn't mean they're all going to be all going to come out in terms of products, but it could give us an idea of what kind of stocks could be coming or what kind of new yield max ETFs could be coming, which when if they do come out, will be added to YMAX. You have Airbnb, guys, you have Adobe. Everyone knows what Airbnb is. Adobe, very big, very popular tech stock. You have BA, which is Boeing, which is some great diversification uh, when it does come out, if it does come out, rather. You have BIIB. I actually had to look up, look this one up. It's Biogen. So this is another uh, healthcare pharmaceutical company that they filed for. You have Berkshire Hathaway. Everyone knows what that is. And by the way, the ones highlighted are the ones that are not out and are uh, have a possibility of coming out later on. The ones that are uh, unhighlighted means they're already out. Uh, in terms of yield max ETFs. You have Intel here, INTC, that's Intel. You have Nike, you have Oracle, another technology company, Roku. Snowflake, uh, which is a cloud computing uh, company. You have TGT, which is Target. That's some great diversification, right? Some consumer in there. You have ZM, which is Zoom Communications. And in terms of the ETFs that they filed for, uh, obviously OARC and the Gold Miners one is out, but they also filed for three other ones. I'm not sure if they're gonna come out, but you have the KWeb one, and we know that um, KWeb is basically an ETF managed by uh, Crane Shares, which is an index that holds uh, Chinese technology companies. Uh, you have TLT, which is long-term government bonds. Now, these ones might not come out because uh, there are already some covered call products that have come out on these, so I'm not sure if they're going to do that. But you also have XBI, and XBI is the Spider S&P. It's a biotech ETF, so this one has a lot of, it's an index fund, an index ETF that has a bunch of pharmaceutical bio, biotechnology companies. So I'm just giving you an idea of what could be coming out in terms of yield max products, which means if they do, they will be added to the YMAX uh, ETF, which in my opinion is a good thing because it's just getting more and more diversified, right? So in terms of yield, guys, the yield, um, basically what you could expect for YMAX is it's going to be the average yield of the ETFs inside of it, right? Because obviously, you know, some of the ETFs will have much higher yield because the stocks are much more volatile, right? The Tesla one, you see here the latest yield based on the last distribution, almost 55%. Um, the Facebook is over 50%, Amazon is over 50%, but you have less volatile stocks also like Apple. You see here that the uh, yield is about uh, just under 23%, right? You have extremely high yield ones because like Coinbase, because the stocks are extremely volatile. Um, there's also the um, MicroStrategy one as well, right? So that one is also going to be very, very high yield. But you have lower yield ones because the stocks are less volatile, like JP Morgan, like ExxonMobil. So basically, YMAX is going to be every month's distribution. You could expect an average of the yield of the other one, uh, of the ETFs inside of it, right? So here are the last four distributions, 53 cents, 56 cents, 63, 73. So definitely trending in an up direction, which is great. So YMAX currently has, based on the last distribution on the current stock price, which is about $20, guys, a yield of over 40%. So yes, it won't have as much yield as some of the single stock ones, but still, 
over 40% yield guys with diversification, really instant diversification. This is really, really one to consider in my opinion. If you're an income investor, if you like investing in diversified funds, right? You don't want to pick and choose the individual stocks. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal ETF uh, to consider in my opinion. What about in terms of performance? Let's check out some of the performance of WiMAX, what WiMAX has done. Just a, a couple of disclaimers here. Uh, I don't know how accurate this tool is. I'm doing it on the dividend channel here. And WiMAX has only been out for a little under six months. So yes, we can't really gauge its performance long term, but you know, six months approximately, it, it gives us an idea on its performance compared to other popular high yield covered call ETFs, for example. So let's just take a look at WiMAX versus the most known covered call ETF, JEPI. And if we do a comparison, uh, starting obviously we're starting with the date that WiMAX came out. You see that WiMAX here is definitely outperforming uh, JEPI by quite a bit here. If we actually do uh, the performance against JEPQ, which is the uh, brother or sister of JEPI, it's the NASDAQ based on the NASDAQ index instead of the S&P 500. WiMAX is still outperforming that, which is very impressive. If we do another very, very popular income oriented ETF, very unique one, SVOL, uh, it's actually outperforming SVOL as well. If we start at the same date that WiMAX came out with. And what was even more surprising guys is that WiMAX is actually currently beating the actual S&P 500. It's beating the SPY here. And I believe it's even beating the NASDAQ 100 as well. So, which is the Qs. So in terms of performance guys, and again, disclaimer, this is only, you know, a short amount of time, but I have to say I'm extremely impressed, extremely impressed. And I, you know, my personal opinion, I think this is really because of the great diversification. And there's also a little bit of crypto and Bitcoin exposure in WiMAX, which could have helped it as well, but still very, very impressive performance. So let me give you now a couple of reasons why I feel you should definitely consider WiMAX in your, uh, if you're an income investor. So here are five reasons, everyone, why I really like the WiMAX ETF, and I think you should definitely consider it if you're an income investor. Reason number one, the, it's very convenient, right? There's no need to pick and choose the individual yield max ETFs. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing that, but if you just want a diversified one-stop shop solution, obviously WiMAX is very, very convenient, right? Um, reason number two, the stocks. And I talked about this with Jay in previous Q&A videos. The stocks that they actually choose to uh, you know, come out with, in term, you know, whether it's Tesla or Amazon or MicroStrategy, these are very carefully selected beforehand, um, knowing that they're going to do, be doing covered calls on them, right? So they make sure the options chains are big and the options are liquid. There's some volatility to the stock. So, uh, you know, these ETFs are not just being chosen willy-nilly. They're actually choosing them uh, because they, you know, they're uh, strategically in a good place or uh, makes sense to do the covered call strategy on them. So that's also really, really good thing. Number three is the instant diversification you're going to get with WiMAX, right? Obviously, you're going to get a lot of great stocks in there and you're going to be diversified between different sectors. There's a lot of technology stocks in there, but there's also things like ExxonMobil and Disney, right? And JP Morgan, and there's even uh, the, the gold miners now, there's a little bit of Bitcoin as well. So you, the, you have instant diversification all in one ETF. And it's a growing diversification, because if they come out with more and more ETFs like Adobe and Airbnb and Target, those will eventually get, all get added in WiMAX. So you'll get growing diversification. I absolutely love that. Reason number four is that you actually have some crypto exposure, mostly Bitcoin exposure. So if ever you're someone who you know, doesn't feel comfortable in investing in Bitcoin or crypto directly, this is a nice indirect way where you could get some exposure because not only is there now the, or it will be the Bitcoin ETF in there, part of WiMAX, but there's also Coinbase in there. There's also MicroStrategy, which some think is really a Bitcoin play. There's even Block, right? Block announced that every month they're going to be buying some Bitcoin with some of their profits. So you have a nice way to get some exposure to Bitcoin without going all in on it. So I think that's really fantastic. And number five, of course, is really, really high income, right? A nice 
40% plus yield right now. Of course, it could fluctuate every month with every distribution because it's the average of all the yield, uh, the yield max ETFs in there. But you have very, very high income, very high yield and a more stable stock price than getting the individual yield max ETFs, right? Obviously, the more diversified a fund is, the more stable its stock price is going to be. And the, the proof is in the pudding. If you look at the YMAX ETF, it's very, you know, stayed very stable near the $20 range, which is fantastic. So I feel these are really the top uh, five reasons why you should definitely consider my YMAX. I think it's, uh, in my opinion, one of the best yield max products. That's the one I own personally. I put some in my dad's retirement account as well. It's a fantastic income oriented product diversified. I mean, it has everything. It's a really a dream come true for income investors. So guys, uh, in case you missed it, I do have many videos, including a latest one uh, where I do a Q&A with Jay Pestricelli and we talk about uh, YMAX and we talk about the yield max in general. So make sure to check out that video if you're interested. I'll put the links uh, in the video description below and I hope this was useful for you and see you next time.